South Africa, Antarctica, Australia. Holy shit. Now we're in. You ever see that movie Jumper? Yeah. That's how I feel right now. Right. Oh, the sound effects fire. Oh my god. One of the most challenging things about filmmaking for me right now is creating without a plan. You, you probably felt this too, it's just, it wasn't like you're on like a day shoot and you're like, oh, like we can maybe figure this out, something real quick or whatever. It's like, yo, we're like moving from one continent to the next in like a span of eight hours. Back when I first started making videos, creating without a plan, without a storyboard, a shot list, that was all I ever did. In fact, in a lot of ways, those tools were almost intimidating. I felt the most creatively confident when I just, I don't know, winged it. Five years later, into this career, I essentially have a panic attack when I try and shoot something without a script or a storyboard. So you could probably imagine that shooting a documentary of an athlete attempting a world first seven triathlons in all seven continents in seven days with a week and a half of time to prepare kind of freaked me out a little bit. Why are you here? Who are you? I am Brett Blackwell. Am I talking to you? Or am I talking to the camera? How did this project even come up for you? It's actually crazy. It came through social media, like I think a lot of our gigs do. Uh, Ray reached out via Instagram. He followed me, I think maybe, it had to have been over a year before you know, he even reached out. So like, I, didn't, we didn't, I, yeah, I guess I was on his radar, but like I didn't really even know anything about him until he reached out. This is Raymond Braun. He is an incredible human and has an amazing backstory. And I don't want to reveal too much about him as a character because this documentary is really important and special to us. As with many of us, he's had a tremendous battle with mental health. And one of the ways he was finally able to overcome those dark times in his life was through physical challenge and pushing his body beyond anything he'd ever done before. Before 2020, he had never run more than three miles. And so when he explained all of this backstory to us and said he wanted to be the first person to attempt seven triathlons in seven continents in seven days, you can imagine I was a little bit shocked to say the least. Reached out via Instagram, told me he has this crazy project that he's working on. He's like, you know, can we hop on a call? Breaks everything down and it's one of those like, this just sounds like bananas, like this isn't real. And I think I honestly discounted it a little bit. My friend Brett and I met with Raymond back in October of 2022. He explained the project to us, his backstory, the motivation for it, the intentions and the end goal of a documentary film. I felt the same way when you hit me up and you were like, yo, like just got off call with this guy, like might have an interesting project. And then you sent me the deck that he originally put together the entire project. And I'm just like, no shot. <laughs> Like what? Seven continents, seven days, seven tri- like what? Of course, right off the bat, we were incredibly interested, but due to an initial lack of commitment from sponsors in order to generate the funding necessary to make the project happen, it kind of fell off our radar. There was a point where I started booking other gigs because I thought it was so dead in the water. It's a documentary piece that we're attempting to capture, but we also haven't put in any of the like upfront leg work to like build out a story, really figure out how we're gonna articulate and like visually capture things. About a week and a half before the project was scheduled to begin, Ray was able to generate the funding needed. So in a matter of less than 24 hours, I went from watching The Last of Us on our couch with a glass of wine to full panic mode. We quickly realized we needed to accept the fact that there would be little to no structure throughout this whole thing. I had to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Whether that was too hot, too cold, hungry, sleep deprived, no shot list to follow, no guarantee of the exact schedule of our flights, let alone even being able to complete the triathlons in order to make the flights. Crazy, bro. Sorry, Go ahead. Going? Antarctica. Novo, here we come. Who from Philly's been in Novo? All while maintaining the need and desire to deliver a high quality project for the sake of my client. I got calculators like 80 plus hours on the plane all together in a week. Literally like when we started the trip and when we ended, I've got a shot of Ryan and he just is like, face is just like <laughs> in the back of the plane, like yeah. looking straight at camera, like it was rough. 
may be wondering, how the hell would you guys do all of that travel? Like how, how do the logistics of something like this even work? Well, there just so happens to be an incredible race organization called the World Marathon Challenge. This has been going on for a handful of years. This is a group of incredible athletes that take on the challenge of doing seven marathons in seven continents in seven days. Raymond worked really closely with the race director, Richard, to allow us to join the group participating in this year's challenge. So this meant that we would be traveling with them on a private plane between each of the race locations. However, when it came to the triathlons Raymond was attempting, we were completely on our own. The real creative challenge with this project came down to the deliverables we had on our plate. While the documentary project was, of course, our primary focus, in order to generate the funding needed for the project to happen, all of the travel and logistics, and along with our production rates, Raymond had a handful of sponsors on board. They kind of had their own set of expectations and deliverables they wanted, and the large majority of them kind of just wanted real-time, short form content, you know, social media stuff. The documentary aspect, of course, is exciting to everybody, but that's also something that takes like many months after the project to like even come to fruition. It went from, all right, let's attempt to capture this documentary with zero pre-production to also let's have a pretty significant list of short form, you know, vertical deliverables to knock out for all of these individual brands. You gotta pay for this trip, but I love Athletic Green. Now. Like again, splitting focus where you're prioritizing both vertical and then horizontal for like the long format. I'm not kidding when I say that Musicbed has been the backbone of all of my music selection for the last, I don't know, six years, whether it's my personal work here on YouTube or my client work. In a lot of ways, this is kind of like a dream brand for me to work with. I'm one of those filmmakers who is really inspired and driven by music. It's a huge part of all of the stories that I try and tell. The quality of music and the artists that are creating on Musicbed, these are like proper represented musicians that are pouring their heart and soul into the music that lives here on Musicbed. You'll even find some songs that you might recognize from popular artists. Finding tracks on Musicbed makes it such an enjoyable experience, being able to narrow down such a specific sound. If you're trying to hunt down a song but can't seem to find the right fit, their team even offers a complimentary song search where you can send them reference tracks that fit the tone and they'll be able to send you some options for your project. The team at Musicbed and all of the artists that contribute really take storytelling and filmmaking seriously. So if you guys want to hear the difference, you can sign up for a free account and get one month free when you use my code with your purchase of an annual subscription. I'm also going to have my own curated playlist on there if you guys want to check out some of my favorite songs. Thank you Musicbed for supporting this project. Now, you might think an epic documentary project like this would have a full crew, director, producers, multiple shooters, sound, production assistants. Nope. We had Brett, Ali, Raymond, and myself. This is Brett and Ali Hi. and Ryan. Hi. Hello. For our camera packages for this project, I knew that we needed to be incredibly lightweight and efficient with every single piece of equipment we brought. Really in this instance, all I could think was less is more. We're moving at such an insane pace. There's no time to have giant Pelican cases, big bulky cinema rigs. So in my mind, the perfect camera for this was the Sony FX3. It's an extremely compact and powerful camera that offers pro video features that make it amazing for run and gun documentary projects like this. With with literally less than a week of lead time, I reached out to my friends at Sony to see if they could help us out with the equipment for this project. And they were able to loan us two Sony FX3s, a 100 to 400, a couple of 24 to 70, 16 to 35s, 24 to 105, which is, I've talked about it before, but I'll say it again, my most underrated filmmaking lens, I think of all time. I genuinely think that lens stayed on the camera like 50% of this project. Again, we needed a compact and robust way to rig these cameras, have them break down really easily, rig them up if we needed to. Condor Blue was able to provide us all of the rigging for the cameras. Guys, 
I realize I'm incredibly lucky to be in a position where I can have brands like Sony and Condor Blue come on board and support my projects. But I just wanna say here that it goes beyond me just getting equipment for these projects. What they're doing in these creative communities, how they're interacting with creators, what they're trying to do to benefit and make the creative community bigger, better, more exciting, more accessible. They're making things possible for creators like me and creators like you that I just, I never could have imagined. A huge component to it in my mind is like, documentary filmmaking as a whole is an extremely difficult thing. We're really trying to build emotion, you know, create drama and excitement through all of the B-roll and, you know, the A-roll that we're capturing. Even if you have a great story, even if you have great characters, incredible locations, all the budget in the world, if you don't have a plan for capturing that story, all of that can mean nothing. There's so many important messages and takeaways that we want to incorporate with Ray's character and let alone all of these kind of individual brand assets that we were trying to capture throughout the duration of the entire project. Right. Balancing all of that on top of the sleep deprivation, on top of having to edit real time as soon as we get on this, this airplane and we're in the air for 12 hours, right. also with no Wi-Fi, like just. So at this point, you can probably imagine my inner perfectionist is just basically fucking screaming. Everything I know about capturing and telling stories essentially just had to go out the window. From the moment we landed in Cape Town, it was hit the ground running and don't look back. The pace at which we were moving between these countries, there was literally, in some cases, like less than six hours mm -hmm. on the ground in these locations yeah. to get the shots, <laughs> let alone get the shots that work for both the branded content as well the as the documentary. Very <laughs> well lit. I'm losing it. How do we even survive? I wonder what would have happened if we didn't miss that flight. Because I've never had so much shit go sideways on one project. This is fun though. Like, through all of it, this shit is fun. Capturing oh, the triathlons wow. themselves proved to be a very interesting challenge. Capturing the actual race footage, like the running, the swimming, the biking, with only two video shooters was almost impossible. What we had to do was make a decision of what the biggest priority in each location was. Also, what parts of each of those race legs, like the beginning or the middle somewhere or the finish, what's gonna look the most aesthetic on camera. I literally do not think I could have done a project like this without like ha genuinely having like a friend by my side. Facts, that is like literally one of my superpowers, I feel like is like working with friends. I will always bring on friends first. That's something that him and I have been talking about a ton. It goes such a long way to have people in your network, people kind of in your back pocket that you're not just you know, using for the work. The creative confidence that comes out of being around people yes. who you genuinely right. like are comfortable with mm -hmm. and not just somebody who you're like, yeah, this is like an incredible shooter that I hired because I, you know, I want right. to deliver the, the absolute highest quality video possible. It's like sometimes nurturing those people around you and those creative relationships can be infinitely more effective and more valuable to you in being able to create the best possible work in the most stressful or most uncomfortable situations. Boom. Literally, this project meant that we were spending over 50 hours on an airplane next That's, to each I other. I think I calculated it was like 80 plus hours on the plane. What happened in the sky, there's bodies like strewn all over the plane. There's like oh nasty God. plane food. Oh man, that plane, bro, was a relic. Yeah, we got some pictures, we'll show you guys what the plane looked like. After working on a project like this, even working on the previous world record project I did in 2018, the one thing that I have truly realized is that there never really is going to be that perfect moment in time where the project lands on your lap and you're 
100% ready for it. The fear of being uncomfortable and being unprepared for something in a lot of ways has driven me to grow faster than I ever could watching YouTube videos or trying to learn or practice things at home. While of course it's so important to be careful to not let yourself burn out on projects that take everything from you, that drain you creatively. There is something to be said for being flexible and being willing to work on projects on a whim that might not have a solid plan in place. Throughout this project, in a strange way, there was almost a sense of solace and what were originally elements of uncertainty I'd never enter a film production without nowadays. I was simply forced to relearn that the best content doesn't always come from perfectly pre-curated moments. When you allow life to unfold in front of the camera, that's sometimes where some of the most powerful and meaningful moments can happen. Mm -hmm.